Assalamu alaikum everyone. I am Dr. Wajid Shabir with another interesting video on ECG interpretation. This is our case for today. But before starting the discussion on this case, as always, I would like you to pause your videos, note down the findings and diagnosis with yourself so that at the end of the video you can compare your findings and the diagnosis with the discussion done in this video so let's begin the discussion on this case as you know that the first thing we which we look at on an ecg is rhythm and for rhythm we look at lead to a rhythm strip which is a long lead at the bottom of the ecg here you can see this is the rhythm strip and as i have told repeatedly in my previous videos that for rhythm to be sinus there should be an upright and prominent p wave before each qrs complex as you can see here that before each qrs complex you can find a prominent and upright p wave here you can see that there is upright and prominent P wave before each QRS complex, which means that the rhythm in this case is originating from SA node. After, after the rhythm, the next step on an ECG interpretation is calculating the heart rate. For heart rate, we will select a QRS complex which lies on broad vertical line. As you can see here that uh, QRS, we have selected a QRS complex which lies on broad vertical line. And between this QRS complex and immediate next QRS complex, we will calculate the heart rate by rule of 300. The rule of 300 is that we will calculate the large boxes between these two QRS complexes as 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, and 45. So the heart rate in this case is 45 which is less than the normal heart rate which is between 60 to 100 beats per minute any heart rate which is less than 60 beats per minute is bradycardia so here we have a sinus bradycardia after the heart rate the next thing is axis for axis, we look at the direction of QRS complex in lead 1 and lead AVF. Here in lead 1, you can see that the QRS is directed upwards. Similarly, the QRS complex in lead AVF is directed downwards. So, we apply the rule of thumb to ascertain the axis on an ECG. In rule, of the th in rule of thumb, we place our left thumb, our lead 1, and our right thumb pointing in direction of QRS complex on lead AVF. So as you can see that the QRS complex is directed upwards in lead 1, so our left thumb will be upwards while in case in lead avf the qrs complex is downwards so the right thumb will direct will be directed downwards so in rule of thumb whichever thumb is pointed upwards the direction is in that side here we have seen that the left thumb is directed upwards so it means that the direction of axis or net axis is towards left and this is a left axis deviation
next we will try to find out the cause of bradycardia here you can see that after the t wave there is a prominence after every p wave there is a prominence and this prominence has a same morphology as that of normal p wave and the rate here which is the atrial rate or rate of p wave is around 300 150 and 100 and slightly less than 100 the atrial rate is around 95 to 100 beats per minute while we have already seen that the ventricular rate is around 45 to 50 beats per minute if we trace the p wave in the rhythm strip from left to right we can see that here this p wave is p wave is conducted while there is no qrs complex after this p wave similarly here is another p wave which is being conducted then another p wave which is not being conducted and then again a p wave which is being conducted also we can find that the pr interval is constant in the conducted beats here you can see that the conducted beats have a fixed pr interval similarly the rr interval it is also regular it is very important to look at RR interval and PR interval when you are suspecting any block at the level of AV junction. The presence of a fixed PR interval rules out Mobitz 1 and complete heart block. And we are left with first degree AV block. Mobitz 2 block and 2 into 1 AV block. Here you can clearly see that one P wave is being conducted while other P wave is not being conducted. So this is a case of 2 ratio 1 AV block. Now it is important to remember that 2 into 1 AV block could be Mobitz 1 or could be Mobitz 2. Meaning that the block in case of 2 ratio 1 AV block, it can, can lie at AV node or it can be below AV node. The definite test to diagnose the location of this block is epistery. But there are some clues on in surface ECG which help us identify the location of our 2 into 1 AV block. We will discuss them later. Again, moving on to further other findings, we can see that the QRS duration is prolonged. We can see that the QRS complex it is more than three small scales. Furthermore, there is a deep S wave in lead V1. While there is a prominent R wave in lead V6 with a notch. Also, there is prominent R wave in lead AVN. So, presence of a wide QRS complex along with deep S wave in lead V1 and prominent R wave in lead V6 and v lead AVL means that this is a left bundle branch block. Whenever you get a 2 into 1 AV block with underlying bundle branch block, it means that possibly the 2 into 1 AV block is located below the AV node and the conduction pathway is actually diseased and pa patient might need a permanent pacemaker. However, when you find a narrow QRS complex with 2 into 1 AV block and patient is asymptomatic.
then there are cer certain bedside maneuvers which help us to differentiate between the location between the nodal or infranodal location of 2 into 1 AV block. Firstly, we can give atropine or we can put the patient on a treadmill to exercise. As both of these maneuvers increase the sympathetic tone and decrease parasympathetic tone at AV node level, so a 2 into 1 AV block which is present at the level of AV node, it will result in improvement in the block because there will be one there will be decreased parasympathetic activity increased parasympathetic activity resulting in better conduction through av node and the block will improve to mobits one or type one av block however if the block is below av node it is in uh, bundle of his or even below that in that case there will be increased sinus rate while the conduction through the AV junction does not improve because it is not under, under the influence of autonomic nervous system. So the block will worse from 2 ratio 1 to 3 ratio 2 or 3 ratio 4 etc. And it means that the patient needs permanent pacemaker. So before calling it a day, we will quickly summarize the findings on this ECG. This is a sinus bradycardia with left axis deviation and 2 into 1 AV block and left bundle branch block. So this is all for today. Hopefully you liked our video. For more videos, kindly subscribe to our channel and stay tuned. Allah Hafiz and take care till next time.